Hey guys, what is up? My name is Megan, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Today we are here with one of my most anticipated videos of the year, and you may notice I am standing up this time instead of sitting down for a TBR video, and that's because it's an extra special TBR coming at you. We are participating in the Believeathon, which is a month-long middle grade readathon, which is created and hosted by Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin. If you've been here before, which thank you if you have not don't forget to subscribe on your way out basically this year I discovered Gavin as well as my love for middle grade and so I'm extremely excited to be able to take part in this round of Believeathon there are many proms this month and crossing my fingers I can get to all of them but yes incredibly excited there will still be a Candyland Picks My TBR which if you don't know what I'm talking about there will be a playlist which I will link in the card. Candyland Picks My TBR is essentially how I usually pick my TBR, so we're doing two games this month. You heard me correctly. Basically, I was so inspired and so excited for believe -a-thon that I decided not only to make an entire TBR for it, but also to play Gavin's TBR game. If you don't follow Gavin, which is probably a tragedy, all his links will be in the description, you're missing out. Well, Gavin actually plays a TBR game called Play Your TBR Right, which is essentially on a play on Play Your Cards Right, where he picks two different books, one he really wants to read and one not so much, and he plays a TBR game to figure out if he wins or loses. If he wins, he can obviously pick the book he wanted to read. If not, he reads the other one. I will explain more as we get into the game, but this is going to be a long video, we're just going to hop on in, I'll explain each prompt, show you guys my selection, and we'll play the game. I hope this works out as I want it to, I don't know how well you guys are going to see the cards, but I'm crossing my fingers. So I have my deck of cards, which I will shuffle. I wanted to buy the jumbo cards, but they're like $13, so was not about to pay that for cards. So, we have our deck of cards. I will be putting the two books for each prompt on either side of the bookshelf. I think we'll put them up here. So let me remove this book for now. And so, let's begin. The first prompt on our mysterious quest is to find the key. And in order to be able to find the key, you must read a mystery book. Mystery middle grade are essentially my favorite. It was hard to narrow it down to two. But let's go. The two books I have for this first part of our quest are The Strangers. This is the first book in the Greystone Secrets by Margaret Peterson Haddix. This is about, and it's, it's a very peculiar premise. This follows a family, and I don't know how many perspectives we have in this book, but essentially we follow our main characters who have always had kind of a normal life, but then they start to question everything when they hear about three kids that were kidnapped who have the same first names and middle names as they do. When they go to confront their mother about it, their mother actually is off on a like really random work trip, and I think it's them figure out, figuring out the mystery of the kidnapping. So I do really want to read this, but this is actually going to go as the book that I'm not too inclined to read, so we'll put it on this end. The book I actually really want to read is The Highland Fal Falcon Thief, which is actually a book that is recommended for this prompt on the believe -a compendium. This is by M.G. Leonard and Sam Segman. I'm sorry, I really need glasses, you guys. So, this I specifically want to read because Emily and Emily Boucher read this for Adventures Through Wonderland. I'll leave her channel in the description as well as anyone I talk about. And she really, really adored this book. And this has to do with a train. And I don't know much else, but I know there is a mystery element and I don't want to spoil myself. So this is the one I really want to read. So it'll go on this side of the bookshelf. We will place five cards. I really don't think you guys will be able to... Oh. Yeah, might want to get rid of this. I will be placing five cards. I don't know how well you guys will see them. You'll have to trust me. So we have three on this side and then I'll put the extra two. Essentially, in order to win this game, I have to guess if the card 
after the one I flip is higher or lower than the one preceding it. If it's of equal value, I need to exchange a card and then do it again. And in order to win, I need to guess all five. I can swap out the card once and basically that's the gist of it. I think you guys will get it as we play, so let's go. So the first card is an eight. Okay, that's pretty easy. So I'm going to say that the this one is lower. And I... Damn! We lost already! Okay, I really don't know how well you guys can see this, but this ended up being a jack. Um, and so I lost the first round and I will be reading the strangers in order to advance to the next prompt. So the strangers fulfills the prompt for collecting the key slash reading a mystery book. So the next prompt is the fingerprints and in order to collect the fingerprints you need to read a book from an author that is of a different culture than you and I really love this prompt and I really had to like dive into my middle grade collection and see what inspired me most. So my two picks for these are actually pretty short. The first one is this one right here which I believe is Tamarind and the stars of Ishita and this is by Jasmine or Balan. I've heard a lot of things about this middle grade. It is very short and I know it has to do with India and I believe our main character's mother actually passed away before our main character actually really got to know her mom and like died pretty much after our main character was born. I don't know much else about this but I love the cover of it and I know it has to do with India and I know our author is not of the same culture as I am. I'm going to go with this one as the one I don't want to read as much although as I will say throughout this video I'm very excited for all of these so it doesn't matter if I end up with this one. And the one I'm going to put for the book I really want to read. It's actually this beautiful edition of Kiki's Delivery Service by Eco. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I don't even know how to pronounce the author's name and I don't want to butcher it, but this is about Kiki and I've heard so many booktubers and people talk about the book as well as the movie and I know nothing about it other than Kiki is a witch and she has a black cat. This aesthetic is honestly stunning and I'm very curious to see about like learn about the story and as well as what I'm going to think about it. So this will be the book I want to read. So let's put our five cards and let's see how many of these I can win. When you watch someone else do it, it also always looks easier than what it actually is. Okay, so the first card is a 10. Oh my god. Obviously I'm gonna go lower. Seven. Oh god. This is hard. Lower? Damn it. Okay, lost again. So two out of two times for now I have lost. So the book I will be reading it for the fingerprints prompt or to read a book from a culture that is not yours is Tamarind and the Star of uh, Ishta. Very excited, a very short book so it's going to help the like 13 books I think that are going to end up on my TBR. The next prompt and our way to proceed in fulfilling the mystery is to capture the scream and in order to do so you need to read a book out loud or listen to an audiobook. I absolutely despise reading out loud therefore I'm going to be going to be the audiobook route. I chose these two books one of them I do already have on audio the other one not so I would have to purchase it therefore for the book I don't really want to read because I don't have the audiobook version I'm going with The Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison Gavin has raved time and time again about this book and the cover is absolutely gorgeous. I do want to read it. All I know is this relates to three different sisters and a family curse so there are little mysterious elements and I had like read a few chapters to see how much I would like it and it does have a very atmospheric vibe so I'm really intrigued to see it. I think I would love the audiobook for this one because the writing style took a little for me to get into so I think it could be a way to immerse myself a little more quickly so if need be I will purchase the audiobook for this one. So it's going right here and for the book I really want to read I'm going to go with 
Agatha Audley, The Secret Key, which is the first book in this kind of mysterious series by Lena Jones. This is about a young girl who wants to be a detective and she kind of creates this detective agency with one of her friends at school and she tries to solve mysteries. I do have the audiobook for this one because I think it was less than two dollars when I purchased it so it would be a little bit more handy for me to pick up this one so that's what I know about it and here it goes. Let's begin with a nine. Why are these all so hard? I'm gonna go lower. Yes, okay, seven. I'm gonna swap that seven out because that's way too hard. And we're going to go for a five. I'm going to say higher. Oh, okay, we have a seven with a seven. That means I can't swap again. Uh, I'm going to go lower. Yes! Five! Okay, we're really close with this one, guys. Um, I'm gonna say higher. Yes! I. So we're two for one. I won one time and lost twice. So I will be reading Agatha Audley, The Secret Key, for the prompt of the scurry game, and that means I don't need to purchase anything else. In order to keep moving and to figure out the mystery, we actually need to find and collect the thorn paid. For that, we need to read a book with a supernatural element. The book I want to read, but really not that much for this round, is The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast. This is a middle grade, which I don't feel I've heard a lot of people talk about. It is written by Samantha McClark, and it's very mysterious in its synopses and I kind of went on Goodreads list to see what kind of book I had with supernatural elements because it's not usually something I gravitate towards and this book came out. All I know is that this boy at the beginning of the book I believe woke up on this like beach stranded. He doesn't really know where he is and I guess he's going on a journey to find his way home and there should be supernatural elements in here as well. It sounds very intriguing and it is short so I won't be mad if I have to read it but I do want to read the other book a lot more than this one. The book I do want to read is Potkin and Stubbs which is the first book and that is by Sophie Green. This was a middle grade monthly book pick and I sadly did not have time to get to it so hopefully this time around I can win and get to this one. This has to do with little Potkin and she wants to be a journalist and so she investigates things to write about and from what I can understand her best friend slash companion on this quest is a ghost so there's your spooky supernatural element and I do know that this was also on the recommended list in the compendium for Believeathon. So it would be great to read it and see what it's all about and I know Jade from Jade Weary Reads loves this one. So it's going right here. Let us pick some cards. This is a lot more stressful than I thought it would be. Okay. So I definitely helped out when I could switch one of the cards, but I might do it again if I need to. We have a four. I'm going to logically say higher. And we... Why? Why? A two? Uh, really? What were the chances? Oh my god, this game. Okay. I guess we're reading The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast for this prompt. I'm not mad, just a little disappointed. Okay, so in order to keep going on the journey, we need to find and collect the crown, and in order to do that, we need to read a book in an alternate world than ours. I feel like a lot of middle grades could fill this prompt. There's one I'm super excited about, and the other one I'm curious, but could do without reading it for now. So the book I am curious about, but not super inclined to read is The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. This was the Adventures Through Wonderland pick for their group book, I believe, throughout the readathon. I did watch the live show, it didn't contain any spoilers. The way the host talked about it, I was very curious and so we're going with this one. 
for that prompt. I didn't really mention what it was about, did I? This is about a, pl a train that goes to impossible places and that's all I know about it. Little side note, but I did find adorable. The author said that this book kind of started as a bedtime story for his kid that he did invent and then it kind of trickled into being a book. It's also the first in a series. The book I really want to read, however, is Pages & Co, which the first book is Tilly and the Book Wanderers and this is by Anna James. This is the story of a young girl who who lives in her grandparents' bookshops and I believe one day the books come alive and she gets to visit these different worlds. I love the premise of this and I watched again Gavin's author discussion with Anna James and I completely fell in love with her personality so I was super intrigued about this and a lot of people have been giving it rave reviews so this is the one I would truly want to read. <laughs> I'm guessing it's lower but then again with my chances it's probably higher we're gonna go higher you know what and there you go I knew it it was higher so this one is a 10 higher or lower than a 10 I'm gonna go lower and an 8 dang why are these all so close okay an 8 I'm gonna say lower just for the sake of it a 6 oh god I think I'm going to swap the six and we are going to go for a four which is somewhat better but not really and I'm going to go higher. Yes! It was a queen guys. I did it. I get to read Pages and Co by Anna James. Finally, so we're at three and two I think. Not a bad score, not a bad score. In order to continue on the quest, we need to find and collect the spilled ink. And for that, you need to read a book featuring some ghosts. One of these books that I mentioned before is making a comeback, which now means that I have two books I'm super looking forward to. The first one is The Ship of Shadows by Maria Kosniar. I had started this middle grade and unfortunately had to put it down because university got in the way. I do know this does have some ghosts in it, like ghosts of old pirates that leave, that used to live on this ship. If you guys don't know what this book is about, it follows a young girl who has always kind of dreamed of adventure and she gets it one day when a all-female pirate crew ship actually docks in her town and they kind of take it upon them to bring her on in some very weird Way. I'm not going to spoil anything, but basically she does go on her adventure. So there's that one, and then we're going to bring back Potkin and Stubbs. Which one do I want to read more? I'm very conflicted. Um, 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 um. You know what? I'll just go with the way my hands are placed. Ship of Shadows on this side, and Potkin and Stubbs right here. I do want to read both of them equally, so this round isn't really a win or lose situation but nonetheless I would like to make it three four three and three so three wins and three losses if I can and I would kind of want to redeem myself with pot and stubs so let's try the first one is a jack I'm gonna go lower a s damn it a six okay and my gut I want to say higher but then my gut is always wrong higher yes oh my god okay I'm gonna go lower damn it this is ending up at a four and two for now, so we are going to read The Ship of Shadows, which really isn't a punishment, but I would like to win because that's kind of the aim of the game, but Ship of Shadows it is! To move on, we then need to find and collect the dagger, and for the dagger we need to read a book with a dangerous setting. This is definitely one of my favorite prompts, and both of these books I was very intrigued in reading and have been wanting to read them for a while. The first one is The Eye of the North by Sinead O'Hart. This is a kind of is it a polar fantasy? Eh? It follows a main character named Emmeline who was prepared for everything until her parents mysteri mysteriously disappear. 
she gets very scared for her life and then decides to flee on a ship to France, I believe, and befriends this boy called Thing, which is a very peculiar name, but also encounters a villain who is heading up north to encounter a monstrous thing and I guess she kind of gets wrapped up in all these things and shenanigans. It is a pretty thick book but one that seems exciting nonetheless. And my other option is actually Frostheart by Jamie Littler which can you not read this book during Believe With On? This is Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin's favorite book, fiddle mi favorite middle grade series. He loves the sequel to this even more than the first book, but I only have the first book and, you know, need to start by reading this one. All I know from this one is that it follows a main character named Ash, and I think he also has missing parents. He has this guardian yeti, he has these powers that no one wants, and it's just a whole thing, and he goes on a quest. On the frost heart. I trust Gavin, which is why sometimes I don't know these synopses very well. Which one do I really want to read? Again, these choices are so hard. Mm. We'll go with the Eye of the North on this one, now, just because I feel this is a Gavin readathon and Gavin's favorite book should be the priority. So let's try our hand at this one. God forbid I could win one. Oh my god. Okay. We have a Joker. Can I just say that it... Why did I not take them out? You know what? This is not going to count. It's giving me an extra chance to read Frostheart. My game, my rules. A king. King is the highest and ace is the lowest, if I forgot to mention that before. So we'll go lower. And an ace. How ironic. Okay, we'll go higher another A, so I need to replace that card with a four. I'll go... I wish y'all could play with me. Let's go... My gut says higher, but the probability of this game says lower. Let's go lower. Yes! Oh! I can't do this a lot longer. This is stressful. I get to read Frostheart by Jamie Littler for a dangerous setting. Woohoo! We must then find a backpack and in order to do so we need to read a new to us author which I love this prompt and I feel like these two books I equally want to read and I haven't really heard anyone talk about so the first one is Mary Underwater and this does deal with a little bit of heavier topics. Uh, the summary kind of says that Mary is feeling like she's drowning and that just breaks my heart. Her violent father is home from prison and the social worker is suspicious of her new bruises and, and she's never met keeps calling and and if she can't get a good grade in her science project, she'll fa fail her favorite class. But Mary doesn't want to be a victim anymore. She has a plan. Build a real, build a real submarine. And the story kind of goes from there. I feel like I could probably bawl my eyes out reading this book, but it sounds very important, and I think it's a great topic to include in a middle grade. So I'm very excited for this one. And the other one is the astonishing maybe by Shantia Grimes. This one, I also forgot what it's about. It says Gideon hates the idea of moving to Nevada from the East Coast. It's so empty and hot in his new neighborhood. Only one person his age lives nearby, the girl next door, Runa, and he notices that she's very different. She wears roller skates and a blanket as a cape when she needs to feel strong, and I guess it's going to be their friendship. I think both these books have kind of important different topics and I don't know which one I really want to read more. I guess this one speaks to me a little bit more right now so we'll put this one right here and as I said both of these authors are new to me and they both have very adorable covers. Why am I so stressed? This is not good for my heart I'm just saying. Again with the Joker. Okay, so it's a free card and then we have a two. So for a two, I'm going to say higher. 
What is this game? What is this joke? I got an ace. I'm reading The Astonishing Maybe. Not mad about it, just a little bit confused. This is why Gavin pretty much hates the game and I guess I do too now. To move on within the adventure and to solve the mystery, we need to find footprints. In order to do that, we need to read a book with a prominent villain. And I have two very different choices. The first one is Malamander by Thomas Taylor, which is a book that says, here you will meet a plucky orphan and a sinister man with a hook for a hand, a mechanical worm monkey with a with powers of prediction, an egg that could grant wishes, and the elusive Malamander. Half fish, half man, who holds the town in its deadly thrall. Clearly just from this, you can see that there are villains involved, and this is the first in a series as well. The second book is called Gargantis. This is the book I want to read, but I also have this book, which I feel no one has talked about, and that is Thomas Wildes and the Book of Sorrows by G.M. Bergen, and this is a review copy I was sent, and I actually waited until Believeathon to read it because it is a middle grade and I thought it would be fun to at least feature it in some videos. This is very reminiscent of Percy Jackson in my opinion, and it has to do with a boy named Thomas, and the first line says, Magic is real, Th Thomas. No matter what, what happens, always remember that magic is real. And Thomas's father has passed away, and Thomas is going to be 13, and there's kind of things that are happening, and there's villains in the story, and new worlds. It sounds amazing, and I do have this one and the second book to review for you guys, so... Oh, I didn't take this one out, did I? So this is going to sit right here. Let's begin. I feel like this game is going to drain all the energy I had. I already feel tired and like I need a nap. Let's begin. The first one is an eight. Lower? A three. Nice. Um, higher. Queen, lower, a seven, oh damn, do we want to switch it out? Mm. I'm gonna go higher, it's a ten, I, I won a round, how about that? So we are reading Thomas Wildes and the Book of Sorrows, which is great because I really need to review it for you guys. Hopefully I love it. The next prompt is the mirror, and for that we need to read a book with a beautiful cover. And I kind of took a little cheating route, not quite, because both of the books I have are by the same author, and they are some of the most beautiful middle grade books I've ever seen. So we have The Girl Who Speaks Fair and... God. And the, <laughs> the Castle of Tangled Magic. I swear you guys, this game is getting to me. Um, both by Sophie Anderson, both have beautiful covers. Uh, this one is actually also signed. It was an October release, I think. And I ordered it from a bookstore in the UK and it's signed and I love it really much. This has to do with a main character named Yanka who when she was a baby she was found in a bear cave and I think it's her finding out about herself. I don't know if she can actually speak to bears but there's that. And then we have this one who follows a young girl named Olia and she steps in a magical doorway and goes to another land. This one sounds a little bit more up my alley for now so this is going to be the one that we really want to read, although this one could... Look at the covers, you guys. Okay, I would like to win, but I don't care if I lose with this one, so we can relax for a few seconds. Y'all should try this at home, I swear. It looks easier than it is. Okay, the first one is a king, so I'm going to go lower. A three. I'm gonna go higher. A three, so I need to change that card. So we're gonna say higher again. A six. We're gonna say higher. Yes. Oh my god. Eight. I'm swapping out that card for a nine. Well, that doesn't really help. 
I'm gonna go lower. Yes! I'm getting good at this. Not uh, the castle of tangled magic it is. So exciting. The next thing we need to collect is the chain and for that we need to read a book with a colorful cast of friends. Why was that so hard to say? Both of these books I am very interested in reading. My first choice for that is The Polar Bears Explorer Club by Alex Bell and this is about a young girl named Stella who knows in her heart that she wants to be an adventurer but I believe her father doesn't really agree and I think she gets the chance to... Wait, no! No, I'm getting this all wrong! I think Stella's father actually has never been one to play by the rules or think that girls can't be explorers and so she leaves behind her pet polar bear and goes on an adventure with some friends? And she needs to prove herself as a junior explorer, so... Oh my god, why am I so... I keep forgetting books on there. So that's going to go here. And then I have The Dragon Mountain by Katie and Kevin Sang. And this one also reminds me greatly of Percy Jackson because it follows a 12-year-old who's named Billy, whose parents send him to a summer camp in China, and I believe he finds Dragon when he's adventuring with his friends. Don't want to spoil myself, but this is a significantly new release as well, so it would be great to read it and review it for you guys. So we went through the deck of cards, so let's shuffle once more. Would it be mad about either of them? Honestly, so it's not too bad. Why is this still here? <gasps> let's see. So the first card is a five. I'm going to say higher. And it's a two. That round did not take long. We're reading the Polar Bears Explorers Club. I feel like there's lots of like wintry polar books, which is a great thing because it's the best time of the year coming along, November and December. Very happy and jazzed about that. So yes, then you guys, I was actually going to ask for your help. We then need to find and collect a flash of lightning and for that we need to read a middle grade with some folklore elements. I think I have some on my stack but I would like to read something different. Therefore I'm going to ask you guys to recommend things in the comments below. I have read some and unfortunately have not really loved what I've read so please don't recommend The Jumbies. I really did not like that book or anything that is similar. I was not a fan, so if you guys have any other options for me, let me know in the comments and I'll kind of figure it out as we go and pick a book from your suggestions. Just a little sidebar, it could be a book that I already mentioned if one of them is really great and you guys think I could double up for a prompt, let me know. And for the last prompt, we are not going to play the game because I'm reserving this spot for my most anticipated middle grade book of the year. The last prompt is to find and capture the shadow and in order to do so, I am going to read Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow, which is book three in the Nevermore series, and it fulfills the prompt because the prompt is to read a book that was originally published in 2020. Hollow Pox is coming out on October 27th in the Canada and US. I have, however, pre-ordered the Owl Creek Junior box with a signed copy of it, therefore it will arrive sometime in November, and I will be reading it, maybe do an unboxing for you guys as well, so all very exciting things and obviously we need to watch Gavin's live show to find out who the villain or slash um, slash solve the mystery at the end of the month. So that's it for the video you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Wish me luck in the editing process although you're gonna see this afterwards. Also let me know if you're planning on participating in believe -a what are your reading plans for the read -a-thon if you are, what are your favorite middle grade books, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Also don't forget to like this video if you liked it, subscribe down below so you don't miss all my reading vlogs for believe -a -thon. and that's about it. Happy reading guys, bye!